emotions will cause conflict in the mind. And conflict in the mind is the same as being in darkness. The renewing factor of your spirit man, the renewing factor of your spirit man is the light you spend in prayer. If they're if you're full of distractions, if there's distractions all around you, in my life. 
In other words, whatever can be in my mind will not only affect my life, but anybody close to me. So that if there is light in my eye that is in the faculty of knowing, then me knowing is going to affect everybody around me, close to me, attached to me, in relations to me, and everything I do is going to have the same kind to give illumination. Now, now watch this because he says, of course, now, if the eye is not single, then there is going to be darkness. And the idea of darkness is not just the absence of light, all right, in terms of illumination, but the eye of darkness renders literally an inability. So that he says, if the mind cannot function, if there is no illumination, if there is no, if there is nothing in your faculty of knowing, if there's no ability in your mind, then your whole life is going to be rendered, uh, rather, uh, uh, rendered without ability. In other words, inability will become what marks your life. That, that it doesn't matter what it is that I have in front of me, I'll never be able to actually achieve or to accomplish. So he says that if the whole eye, if, if the eye is single, if the faculty of my mind has lighted it and there's no conflict in my mind, I can function. And everything around me will have illumination. But if it is not, if my mind ain't working right, then nothing will work right. This illustration before, and I'll use it again because it is the simplest of the um, of the illustrations I, I have uh, for you right now. And that is, you know, when when you're nervous and you're scared, um, and you're trying to accomplish something in a certain amount of time, that you, it, it could be something you do every day, and just the attempt to do something you every do every day when your mind is not clear, you fumble and stumble at it. Nobody talks to me. It says, you know, it's, it's like, you know, it's like with me, Jermaine, if I go to put my key in the door, I'm so used to putting the key in the door, and I have been so precise about it, that I don't fumble around the lock when it comes to putting the key in the door. I know how to get it right in, because I know just the right measurement. I've messed with this door every day. I know how to do that. But let a dog chase me. <laughs> you know, let me, let, let me be trying to get away from somebody. And that same door, because, because nothing in the faculty of my mind is functioning or clicking at the moment the way it's supposed to, now there is an inability to put the same key in the same lock that I put it in every day with the same ease. Nobody talking. And so then what, 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 what he deals with here for us is if, if our pursuit, and this is, I'm, I'm trying to bring this up to today, if our pursuit of intimacy with God, if our, if our place of relationship with God is really what we're after, then we're never going to be able, watch this, to approach God and or approach the pursuit or achieve the pursuit of intimacy with God if there is no clarity in our minds. In other words, you'll never achieve the kind of intimacy with God when your life is surrounded with distractions. Lord, help me, Jesus. All right, I, I need you to look at somebody and help me get the rest of the crowd. Look at them right in the eye and say, if, if, they're, if you're full of distractions, if there's distractions all around you, you will never achieve the kind of intimacy with God you desire. Because those distractions will cause conflict in the mind. And conflict in the mind is the same as being in darkness. 